Oh, Heavenly Father, would you please come amongst us today as we try to unite for a common cause and a good goal. Heavenly well, Father, you know that we are trying hard as we can to bring the city together. The Lord John Jesus, in your name, we ask your blessing this day that we can all get on one accord and call something great to happen in this city. In your name, Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. I think most of everybody around here knows everybody there. I don't know if you met Miss Burns. She was the uh, fatherhood. You and uh, Bill, but we kind of introduced ourselves before y'all came in. I think everybody else, you pretty much know everybody else here, right? I think so. Do you, uh, Not everybody. But... Well, let's do that. Let's introduce ourselves so he, he'll know because we won't have the opportunity to kind of know who we're dealing with. Let's start him. Man, it's wrong with you. Did see Williams? Hey, Dad. I met, I met, I remember. George Buster Ryan. Everybody, everybody knows him. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Robinson. Okay. Um, Bridget Byrne. Okay. And like I said, we split in a couple of, couple of people, but I wanted to uh, get one of those uh, letters in. Uh, <clears throat> we got this in the email uh, and, and really just sent this out as a way of generating discussion. Uh, I wanted to kind of give you all a background of how we got to this point, though, and then uh, look over this and then kind of generate some discussion about how we could uh, uh, move forward and kind of uh, hopefully uh, plan some positive events for our community. But uh, the first time uh, it came up, I met with George and Commander Childress and, and uh, Jason Cunningham, and we had a meeting uh, regarding some of our parks as well as um, uh, concerns about uh, some of our youth uh, in the area and really not having any kind of activities to uh, take part in and, and want to try to do something to uh, address that. We had some discussions around that. Uh, and also, my work in the community has been working around with that for quite a while. I think most of y'all know uh, my work in the community, maybe you don't, Ms. Byrne, but uh, we have worked uh, diligently to uh, try to create um, positive opportunities for our, our children and our youth in the uh, community and, and kind of create opportunities as well. So uh, with that, the idea came to me one afternoon uh, when I was uh, watching a TV broadcast and there was a, it was out of Tallahassee, county manager and a uh, mayor, they was having a pool party. And he said the reason they was having the party, come on, have some here the, how we the reason they was having the party was to provide some positive uh, <clears throat> outlets for the youth during the summer because typically uh, during the summer uh, they saw an increase in crime. We have the same problems uh, here. Uh, our children are out of school in the summertime and, and a lot of them just find uh, some negative activity to get into. Uh, and what they was doing, they was opening up their facilities to the kids and, and allowing them to come in after hours to uh, kind of host events and give them some positive direction. And, and I was, you know, I take some of the uh, blame because I was part of uh, uh, the thinking that if we shut everything down, uh, then we'll solve the problem. But it's not. It's really just kind of shifting the kids from one place to another, and they're really not being provided in a positive outlet, especially during the summertime and on the weekends. Uh, this is what I'm talking about is typically going on on Sunday afternoon. Uh, you know, we have a lot of kids gathering up uh, and, and, you know, trying to find something to do. So, <clears throat> came up with the idea of what you see in front of you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm calling it the Vallis Revitalization Area Events. Hopefully we can come up with a better name, but it's just really something to um, kind of give us a starting point. Would you give her a copy of this? Uh, and, and it really to encourage and develop and improve the quality of individual and family life in the urban and rural areas of our, our city. Our mission will be achieved by creating safe, decent, and affordable housing which will serve as a catalyst for community improvement and strengthening economic conditions. The purpose will be to conduct economic uh, development events that will promote community development and promote small disadvantaged businesses that will provide needed services and businesses within our designated revitalization area. Um, <clears throat> I know that these are all goals of the uh, city and things that we have been trying to work uh, toward for a long time and saw this as a way of all our agencies, the parks and recs, the city, and the Valencia Housing Authority coming together to try to work together to do just that, uh, along with the community support that we believe 
uh, with that. <clears throat> I want to say this here tonight. Uh, Y'all part of my plan, it was bad plan. I had about three or four pastors that said they wouldn't be here because of Bible study. Day. Church is kind of out. And um, uh, next time we'll do this, we'll do it on a different night. But so uh, we got three or four people in the group, and I think Pastor William, maybe Pastor Adam as well, uh, have a um, uh, Bible study class tonight. And they're going to have to leave around by seven. I hope we'll be finished by then. But what you have also in front of you is some proposed events. I uh, want to discuss those briefly. And then uh, the Housing Authority Director, Mark Stabby, has, uh, you know, he emailed his suggestion because he's uh, said he would be out of town, but he has a representative here. Uh, and talk about those suggestions and then open it up for some discussion around hopefully what we could do, come up with some positive events to have in our community to uh, get people in the community involved and then also support the uh, missions and, and things that we're trying to accomplish through the city parks and rec and the housing authority. And I know this from working with all these agencies that I think is something that we're all trying to work toward and I didn't think it was in a better way than us to work together. But the voter education, registration, and participation, this is not in support uh, against any candidate. Uh, it's really just to try to get um, the residents in these areas involved with the voting process and for them to realize that it's important for them to take part in that process. Uh, I spoke with, um, I tried to have somebody here from the Board of Elections, uh, and they says uh, they was kind of short staff at this time, but they informed me that they have training classes, and if we wanted to hold a voter registration event, we could get some people and we'd get trained up and, you know, have the uh, voter registration classes, and we'll follow, I will follow up with them on that uh, day. Uh, <clears throat> some of the proposed events, uh, you hear this whole event over again, the kids moving, uh, that, so we change it from biohousing to some kind of, I don't know, terminology, but we'll work that out. Uh, antique and vehicle car show, fire safety, and, and maybe something with food vendors, but just a community event in the park where, like I say, on a Saturday, uh, Sunday, whenever we decide to do it, but you can walk around to the park and you can have these events going on in support of our vendors. The revitalization area farm days, this is something that uh, introduced the council, and council picked it up, and it has become a tremendous success downtown. We have had a lot of vendors come out and be a part of it, and I went to a couple of them myself, and uh, they have a lot of good food and a lot of good stuff down. So if you haven't been, I would encourage you to attend the one downtown. But I also wanted to try to hold something like this in our park where we have uh, little small area farms. I know y'all see them all the time, guys sit around, say the watermillers and other little stuff like that where they could come out and maybe set up and we could do something like that. I know it's a lot of details we have to work out, but we could uh, talk about that and expanding the farm days to these areas uh, and stuff like that. The handyman program. Uh, this is something that came about as the um, as a um, um, one of the uh, impediments identified in the AI, and they talked about how a uh, person purchased a 500 piece of uh, $500 appliance can end up paying as much as $2,200 for that appliance through a rent-to-own uh, program. Uh, we, they also identified that uh, we have a large amount of uh, single family heads of household, uh, majority of them being female. Uh, so providing a service like this, I think, will also create job opportunities and provide a service back to our community to help do a needed repair, uh, yard maintenance, uh, and you know, just anything, uh, hanging curtains, whether it's assembling furniture, anything like that, well, you know, people may need help, we could come in and we could assist them in those areas and stuff and identifying that market. But having something like that a part of an event and letting people know that it uh, exists. If you turn to the second page, and I'm going to go over this and then open it up for us to kind of talk a little bit. Uh, this is from Mark Stab, and he talked about the family moving night, and he brought some points that uh, I have not even considered, and he says whereby the blow-up screen could be used to show movies to our neighborhood family. Many in Valence take for granted having the money to go to a movie, whereby many of those that we serve here cannot afford this luxury. It would be a well-attended event, in my opinion. And, you know, I, I just envision something like that, maybe on a Friday or Saturday, I'll stay right down the street, and I would love to just get up and maybe be able to walk down to the park and uh, take a little nephew with me, uh, and we sit down and have a movie, a hot dog, or whatever. But it's an opportunity, I think, for us to bond 
as a community, as well as having some positive events in the community. Uh, an employee job fair. <clears throat> Unemployment in these areas is as high as 50% uh, in and around the housing authority. It is a real problem, and that's once again what we're trying to do. Uh, address that through community events whereby we are addressing issues but having com positive community over an event. And I think uh, this is excellent, you know, getting uh, job fairs and probably with the Department of Labor, Wiregrass and other people to come out and talk and try to work with these uh, kids about possible job opportunities. Uh, it is, it, it, if that be the case, what he says is, any other sources of job for those in the community? We hear sometimes employees say that they are job but no one wants them. If that be the case, then we should try to identify employers and match them with folks who need work, which once again I think is an excellent uh, statement and it's an excellent opportunity for us to say, hey, we got people here looking for work, you know, and, and want to work and provide that opportunity. Contingency of churches prepared to host events. Uh, maybe not necessarily church events in the traditional sense, but outreach uh, to the uh, community, and I know Pastor Williams, this is something we had talked about one time, uh, uh, having some events uh, in the community, uh, uh, where the church comes into the community and, and holds some events, but uh, working with the uh, local churches, and this might be some what we get with the Dallas uh, Ministers Association, or however, and, and bring them into uh, on board with us to kind of look at this. The food bank, <clears throat> and I don't know, I'm not sure what the mantle drops is, we had an uh, event in Tomtown, and I know they bought a big semi truck full of food, and it was it was well received. And they just bought the food, and it was given away free to the uh, people who was there at the uh, event. <clears throat> I ended up with almost uh, the back of my truck filled up with food, and I just took around and just uh, gave it to people in the area who I knew had kids and uh, other stuff, and uh, probably could utilize. So I thought that was a good idea, and I, I tried to uh, make contact with Frank uh, Richards over the food bank. He said he was out of town. This week, and uh, I spoke at a call, but I'll follow up with him. Miss um, Victoria Copeland is a real estate. I don't know where she is. She said she would be here. She's a real estate um, uh, person, and she had talked about and already doing some credit counseling uh, and, and, and things. She talked about how uh, if you was on Section 8, Section 8 can actually be used to purchase a house. Now, I don't know how uh, that works, but she talked about that. I'm really interested in following up with her on how that works well. If you got a person on Section 8, you can utilize that towards going into a uh, resident. Uh, <clears throat> I was talking with Pastor Wright uh, this afternoon, telling him about the meeting just following up. And he mentioned the uh, summer lunch program. The city schools, and I remember this way, because I used to, during the summer, I used to remember where we didn't have a lot of places to go, but at 12 o'clock, we used to go to the cafeteria and eat lunch uh, at the uh, school. I don't know how that would attend uh, time with the uh, park, but I wanted to mention it as just a way of putting out uh, ideals uh, and maybe it's something we can bring the school board on with us uh, you know, to promote the healthy eating uh, initiative, especially during the uh, summer. Uh, once again, when kids don't have access to a lot of this stuff because school is out, uh, we don't have any programs and things in place, and that might be another opportunity for us to look at and explore. Just on that real quick, I actually read an article today, City of Columbus is doing that right there right now. I just read it this morning, DHS sends out, um, you know, all the stories around the state that pertain to us, and the City of Columbus schools are doing that right now, where it's a free breakfast and a free lunch um, every day for the month of June and July. Really? And we are actually doing that as well at the community center. Yeah. It's through, it's through food and nutrition services. I've got a lot of information on that through the Georgia Strike Force. They are trying to get more providers to provide uh, food for uh, people who uh, in food insecure home kids who can't uh, don't won't potentially get a meal. So uh, if I got in, uh, a state Georgia state contact, the young lady's over. She was looking for community based organizations that want to participate. <coughs> You know, and naturally work with the food bank because they basically they drop the food there. Well, I, I think with the uh, the people that we got talked about, the housing authority, mm -hmm. what you're talking about, and what you mentioned, uh, we should be able to come up with uh, something like. I'd like to follow up. Um, we could follow up with a plan on how we could uh, address that and have that as a part of the uh, 
what we could do in the park event is make people aware of this, I guess, and then say, hey, this is what we have going on in terms of uh, summer lunches, uh, uh, you know, healthy eating programs that a kid could attend. But this could be a part of our park program where we just distribute this information and stuff. But I wanted to open that up, open it up now for discussion and, and any other ideas. But um, let's look at, you know, coming up with some possible ideas that we could do in the park, number one. Um, if we could lock down uh, a target date or something that we could work toward, y'all feel like we could work toward, I'd like to do that. But more importantly, just um, the ideas for a positive event in the park. Let me say this, you know, uh, and, and I feel strong about it because we have the um, Bottleton Park, the youth complex there. Uh, we have a lot of things that where we provide, and it's a great opportunity because we do the host the, um, the uh, summer tournaments and stuff there. And we have a lot of activity, but we have the other part that was just an open field and is not being utilized. Uh, and that's where I really think we kind of, you know, take advantage of that, um, utilizing that park and that uh, facility to host these events and kind of get the children. That's really what I think. We get them in the mindset of going to the park as opposed to standing on the corner, I think we would have accomplished a lot in the city in terms of reducing crime and getting our kids to think positive about the events we're going to be having in the uh, area. So let's open it up. Y'all got any ideas or uh, suggestions? I'd like to hear. Uh, and if you got any comments about what we said so far, I'd like to hear that. But that is the primary reason we're here, to kind of come up with some ideas for uh, this uh, park event. 